the three big broad classes of proof for God that have that philosophers have been dabbling in for, for centuries, okay? There's kind of the ontological argument, yeah. teleological argument, and cosmological argument. Without boring people too much, let's just go through them. So let's, let's start with teleological, which I think is probably the one that nowadays in modern times gets most credence and people find probably most persuasive. It's sort of the design argument, right? Yeah, it's the one that people really like to argue about these days, even though in the ancient world it was the one nobody would argue about because everyone just assumed it was true. Just make the case for us in a sentence. Well, What's the idea the is that something about the design in the world, the appearance of design in the world, the appearance of order or structure in nature points to some kind of design or points to some kind of consciousness. And the ontological <laughs> argument, moving right along, uh, explain, it, explain the third and final uh, strand of thinking to us. This is the hardest for modern people to get their heads around, and I still don't understand it. Yeah, I think it has, it, it's often formulated in a very medieval way with lots of funny terms. The idea is basically that there's something about the idea of God that discloses the reality of God, that something about this very concept tells us that that God must exist in some form or another. And I think often the problem is that we have a way of thinking about God that's very narrow, that's kind of like a really, really big toaster or a really powerful toaster, as opposed to something that has a different relationship to being than most things that we experience in the world. I actually wrote in my thesis that there, are, there, is, a, there is a type of purple mushroom on Mars, which is the tastiest mushroom in the universe. And the reason I know it exists is because a mushroom that exists is a tastier mushroom than a mushroom that doesn't exist. Therefore, if it didn't exist, it wouldn't be the tastiest mushroom in the universe. Right. And a very similar argument was presented by another monk, uh, uh, I'm not a monk, by the way. Right after probably. Anselm presented the argument that you just illustrated. So this debate has been going on for a long time. And what you find is through history, a lot of these people who developed these arguments for God, for instance, Anselm in the Middle Ages, um, wasn't talking to atheists, wasn't having a debate about whether God exists or not. What they're actually interested in is getting us to think about reality differently, getting us to think about what God could mean differently, and what reason can tell us about the universe differently. Mm. And so this position we find ourselves in today, where proof is being talked about as fundamentally a matter of does God exist, does God not exist, is kind of beside the point for a lot of these people. And in a lot of cases, actually, the line gets blurred between the kind of God that we like to think about today and the kind of, say, atheism that we like to think about today. A lot of these proofs came from people where it would be hard to place where they, where they are you know, on, that, on that spectrum mm. today.